Hello everyone. So in the previous session, we started discrete time systems and we have discussed what are the different classifications of discrete time systems. We have also discussed what is the difference between linear and non-linear system. We have also solved one example based on linearity and non-linearity. In this particular session, we will discuss about one more classification of discrete time system that is time variant and time invariant systems. So let's get started. Now a discrete time system is said to be time invariant or shift invariant if its input output characteristics do not change with respect to the time. So this is the definition of time invariant or shift invariant system. Otherwise the system is considered as time variant. So we need to understand this definition that the system characteristic must not change with respect to the time. Then only we can say that the system is time invariant system. Now there is a condition which has to be satisfied to test the time invariance of a system. So the condition for a system to be time invariant is y of n comma k is equal to y of n minus k. And the condition for time variant system is y of n comma k is not equal to y of n minus k. Now let us understand what exactly y of n comma k is and what is y of n minus k. So by looking at this y of n minus k, it is clearly visible that y is the notation for the output n is the time and k is the shift variable. So y of n minus k is delaying the signal by k unit. So basically we can say this part, this RHS part is actually the delayed response or we can say the delayed output. So that we have written over here, y of n minus k is my delayed output or we can say delayed response. Next, what is y of n comma k? Basically, when an input signal is delayed and after that it has been supplied to a system, then the output signal what we receive is my y of n comma k, which is output or response due to the delayed input. So with this condition, alternatively, the definition for time invariant system is a discrete time system is said to be time invariant if the response due to the delayed input is identical to the delayed response or we can say delayed output. So this is my alternative definition for time invariant system or shift invariant system. Let us understand this concept in more detail. Now as you can see we have two block diagrams over here on the screen. This is my first block diagram and this is my second block diagram. In the first block diagram as you can see an input signal is supplied to a system. Now whenever a signal is supplied to a system it is converted to the output. So my output or response is y of n. So t of x of n is my y of n. Now this y of n is supplied to the delay block of k unit. So after delaying this output signal we receive y of n minus k which is called delayed output or delayed response. Now coming to the second block diagram as you can see we have interchanged the position of system and delay block. So the input signal is first supplied to the delay block of k unit and after the delay block so this is my delayed input. Now this delayed input is supplied to a system and the output we receive is y of n comma k. So I can say this y of n comma k is my output or response due to the delayed input. So ultimately what we need to do is that to test the time invariance this y of n comma k which is delayed output must be equal to the y of n comma k that is response or output due to the delayed input. So this is what we are going to do. So let us summarize this process. To test the time invariance of a system, we will first go through the first process where an input signal is supplied to a system to produce the output. Now the output is given to the delay block to produce the delayed output, which is called my delayed output or delayed response. Now the second point is the input is supplied to a delay block to produce delayed input. Now this delayed input is supplied to a system to produce output due to delayed input which is y of n comma k. So this is all about time variant and time invariant system. So in the upcoming lecture we will understand the concept with some examples. Thank you.